The problem with making your NAS accessible from the internet is that you will need to understand and then configure a number of different technologies in order to get it to work. So rather than having to get a static public IP address, mess around with firewalls, buy a domain name and SSL certificate, then try and work out how to get everything to work together, we can use something called Synology Quick Connect, which after a couple of clicks will link our NAS to a Synology server, which will then act as a relay so that we can remotely access our NAS. In order to set up Quick Connect, we first need to sign into Distation Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the desktop, if we select Control Panel, under the heading Connectivity, we will find the setting External Access. With an external access, we have a number of settings, but we can basically ignore them if we're using Quick Connect. As Quick Connect is super easy to set up and configure, from within the Quick Connect panel, we simply need to tick Enable Quick Connect. We are then prompted to either enter the sign in details to an existing Synology account or create a new one. You may find that your browser blocks the pop up window that you need to use. If this is the case, you will need to first unblock the pop up window and try for a second time to sign in with your Synology account. As we already have a Synology account, which we used in order to configure cloud backups, our NAS is prepared to automatically sign us in. However, if you don't yet have a Synology account, it will be at this point that you will be prompted to create one. Once our Synology account details have been registered, Quick Connect will be enabled. We now need to create a Quick Connect ID. A Quick Connect ID is basically like a domain name, in that it has to be unique in order to connect back to our NAS. Let's see if the ID name that we want to use is still available. It's worth noting that Quick Connect will automatically create a free SSL certificate for our NAS to use. An SSL certificate is the HTTPS part of a web address that is used to verify a website's identity and encrypt the connection between our computer and our NAS. After clicking Apply, we're shown a few notes on how we remotely connect to our NAS, so let's give it a try. If we jump over to a smartphone, and then disable Wi-Fi, so that it's only able to connect to the internet using its data plan. Using a web browser, we can now test that we can remotely connect to our NAS by typing the URL that we saw in the Quick Connect panel. As you can see, our browser will first connect to a Synology server, and then through the server, redirect us to our NAS so that we can see the sign-in page to Distation Manager. For Synology applications, like DS Audio or Photos, if we open the application, when presented with the sign-in page, if we simply use our Quick Connect ID, followed by the credentials for a valid user account, the app will automatically connect us to a Synology server, and that server will redirect the app to our NAS and sign us in. Let's take a quick look at connecting to our NAS from a computer. As Quick Connect has created a domain for us to use, if in the address bar of our browser we type our ID name, followed by dot quick connect dot two. If we now add a forward slash, followed by our alias name for file station, when we press enter on our keyboard, we are shown the sign in page for file station. It's now a good idea to test all of the aliases that we have on our NAS, which for us includes Audio Station, Synology Photos, and the Distation sign-in page. If we take a look at the address Quick Connect is using, we can see that our connection has been encrypted, so it should be safe to use Quick Connect in a cyber cafe or through your office's Wi-Fi. Although Quick Connect is super easy to set up, if you look on internet forums, there are a lot of people who argue that Quick Connect is not secure. 
while we're not security experts, we suspect that Quick Connect is really just creating a glorified VPN connection back to a Synology server, with that server then acting as a relay point on the internet. So because our data is traveling through a Synology server, theoretically, we're allowing Synology to see our data. Luckily, it seems that Synology recognize that people have concerns about Quick Connect, so have provided us with a couple of additional settings. If we return to this station manager, and once again open external access, within the Quick Connect panel, we have an option called Advanced Settings. As the name suggests, Enable Quick Connect Relay Service can be used to enable or disable the clever way that Synology have bypassed the security of our home network in order to establish a remote connection. So if we were to disable this setting, we will revert the Synology servers to act only as something called a dynamic domain name server, which basically means that the Synology server will no longer try and bypass our home network security, but instead will only resolve our Quick Connect ID and then direct any internet traffic for our NAS to the router of our home network. Then in order for our NAS to be accessible from the internet, we will need to manually configure our router in order to allow internet traffic to reach our NAS. So in theory, if we disable Quick Connect Relay Service, we should make our NAS more secure as our router will be managing the data traffic coming from the internet. After clicking Apply, if we now jump back to our smartphone and attempt to connect to our NAS, we will find that it will fail, so we now need to enable a couple of port forwards on our router. While your router settings will probably be different to ours, the same basic principles will apply. So first we will need to know which port we will be creating port forwards for. If you've been following along with our series, then your NAS is currently configured to run Audio Station, Synology Photos, File Station, and Disk Station Manager. However, for anyone who has configured their NAS in a different way, you will need to find out which service ports on your NAS are currently being used. One way to do this is to create a checklist of the services you've enabled on your NAS, then jump over to Synology's website and compare the services that you've enabled with the list of ports being used by your NAS. If you would like to see this document, we've made a link to it in the description for this video. As we will need to change settings on our router, we are first going to need to load its system settings page and more than likely locate and select its advanced settings. We now need to choose the port forwarding option, which on this router is called port management. As our router has not been configured to do any port forwarding, we now need to create our rules, which on this router is a very simple process. After clicking on the Add button, we are presented with a list of the devices connected to our home network. From this list, if we select our NAS, which we can identify from its static IP address, we can create a rule for it to use. As we only have a limited set of services running on our NAS, technically we only need to create two port forward rules. One for port 5001, which is for secure HTTP traffic, and one for port 1900 for audio station. Let's start by making a rule for audio station, which will be for port 1900. However, as audio station uses a communication protocol called UDP, we first need to select this option. Now in the external port, which is for the data coming into our home network, we need to enter 1900. Then for the internal port, we also need to use 1900. When we click Save, our rule is created. We now need to repeat the same process, but this time we need to create a rule for 5001 and use TCP. After we click save, we're ready to test that our port forwarding rules work. So let's return to our smartphone. If we once again 
try and remotely access our NAS via a web browser, we should find that it connects. We also need to test any Synology applications that we've installed on our phone. The other option that we need to take a look at in advanced settings is permissions. The main aim of permissions is to give you control over which services running on your NAS will be accessible from the internet. For example, because Disk Station Manager theoretically has full access to your NAS, and currently its sign-in page is accessible to anyone on the internet, is a target that's particularly attractive to hackers. So if you don't need to use the DSM, it's a good idea to disable its permissions, which will mean that going forward, you will only be able to access the DSM through your home network. It's also worth noting that because we've disabled DSM, we will not be able to remotely access the web interface for File Station, Audio Station, and Synology Photos, which means that we will have to use their corresponding applications, so we're going to leave mobile applications enabled. However, if for whatever reason, you need to remotely use your DSM, then we recommend that you implement two-factor authentication on all of your user accounts, something that we will be taking a look at in a future video. Finally, in permissions, we have something called file sharing, which is something that relates to the ability to create internet links to files or folders on our NAS. While file sharing can be very useful, as this is not a feature that we intend to use with our NAS, we're also going to disable file sharing. If we return to our smartphone, we should find that while we can no longer remotely access our NAS using a web browser, if we open a Synology application, like DS Audio, we can still access our music files. So to summarize, in this video, we took a look at how you enable Synology Quick Connect, which is an easy way to make a Synology NAS accessible from the internet. We then demonstrated the alternative way that you can configure Quick Connect to theoretically make it more secure, something that can be done by disabling Synology Relay Server, creating port forwards on your router, and setting remote access permissions for the services running on your NAS.